Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 13. Now in study, we have studied metals, non-metals, reaction of metals. Where do this metal occurs? Where can we find this metals? Earth crust is the major source of all the metals. It's the earth, the mother earth which gives most of the metals to us. Sea water is also a source of metal. Sea water contains sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, also, etc. From these we get this metal, sodium, magnesium, etc. Right? The elements or the compound which occur naturally in the earth crust is called minerals. For example, you have this gold, silver, copper, they occur naturally and they call minerals, right? So, so it is like this, you got a big rock, which has, let's suppose, 5% gold. That will also be called a mineral. You got one more big rock, that is 1% gold. That will also be called mineral because mineral is nothing but a naturally occurring thing which has some percentage of elemental compound. For example, this may have, let's suppose, 2% uh, copper. This may have 90% copper, right? I'm taking an example of different rocks. This may have, let's suppose, 50% uh, uh, gold. And this may have, let's suppose, 90 per or 80% uh, silver. There are different kind of minerals we got, right? But is it feasible to take all the minerals? Is it feasible to take a mineral which has only 2% copper and to extract copper from this? I don't think so because the cost involved to take out copper from this is too much, right? You get only 2% copper. It doesn't make sense. So what do we do? We have a new term called ores. Ores are those minerals which has high percentage of particular metal and is profitable to extract metals from this. For example, this guy is 50% gold. It is profitable to find gold from this because even if it has 50% gold, you can take out gold and gold is costly. If this guy has, let's suppose, 50% iron, it may not be profitable. Why? Because iron is not that costly. If you send, if you spend, let's suppose, 1,000 rupees in this and you, you get gold worth rupees 5,000 rupees, it is still worth doing the pain, right? Taking the pain. If you spend 1000 rupees on this to uh, take out the iron and you get only 500 rupees worth iron, that means it is not worth, right? So it won't be an iron ore, but it may happen the iron cost is more. The iron cost may go high in that case it becomes profitable to extract iron from this. Then you can call this guy also as ore. So ore is, you can't say that this guy is ore or not. That all depends on the current economic condition also. Currently the gold is costly. So even if it has 50% gold, it is profitable to take out gold from this. This guy has 50% iron, but still not profitable to take out iron from this. Why? Because maybe the cost involved is more. In both cases, the cost involved is 100 rupees. So, ore is nothing but a mineral from which you can take out iron or any metal profitably. So, for that, it should have a high percentage of that metal. For example, copper has 2% in this. No way. It doesn't make sense. You spend, let's suppose, 1000 rupees on this to take out copper, and you found that you found copper only for 50 rupees. It doesn't make sense, right? So this is not a ore. One percent gold, it is not feasible. Maybe after 50 years, 100 years, the gold price is so high or we have a better process of uh, extracting gold. In that case, it may become a ore. But now it is not because you will spend again uh, in this, let's suppose 10,000 rupees to uh, get gold and whatever you gold you are getting, you are selling, selling for 5,000 rupees, it doesn't make sense. So ore is nothing but, but a mineral which has a typical high percentage of the particular metal and you can profitably take out metal from that. Correct. So we know we have something called ore and we have to extract metal from ore. So you can say extraction of metal from ores, right? Now, if you see some metals are found in free state, for example, gold, silver, platinum, copper, they are very reactive. So they are, they are found in free state. So you don't have to do much on this, you just grab the gold and enjoy, right? So you don't have to do much chemical reaction, maybe you have to do mud cleaning or something in this case, 
clean the muds and those kind of stuff but they are found in free state some are found in compounds they are reactive for example sodium potassium calcium and chimanodium they are reactive they are reactive so they don't exist in free state they exist in compound some are moderately reactive for example iron lead zinc and they are found in oxides sulfides carbonates generally in three forms but mostly oxides why oxide because oxygen is abundant right so if you see ores are generally found in oxides why oxide because oxygen is 50% right so any metal which will get oxygen first because oxygen is everywhere you keep a oxygen you keep a metal outside um, i mean on the terrace also it will find oxygen because oxygen is in the terrace also so most of the ores we found are in the form of oxides the reason why because oxygen is a very reactive element and it is abundant on earth so there are two reasons first is oxygen is a reactive element and it is abundant on earth so any ox metal you keep keep it anywhere if the metal is reactive it will react with oxygen correct so so we, we generally get uh, sometimes we get metals in free state sometimes or the the non reactive metals are in free state the reactive metals are generally in compounds right and moderately reactive metals are in forms of oxide sulfides or carbon so if you see my these metals gold silver they are found in the native state in nature you don't have to do anything you have the gold they are since they are not reactive you just have to do the mud cleaning and all maybe crush it and remove the mud and you have the gold ready right some less reactive you can find the get the metal from that by reducing this using carbon this is carbon is cheaper we are using this because see everything is or everything the cost is involved all right we don't want to use the costly um, um, elements to to reduce things right we just want to do things it's cheaper right because we have to end of the day get the metals and sell in the market sell for profit right that's what i do so they use carbon to reduce in these cases where they are moderately active some metals are very very active these metals they can't reduce from carbon because they'll react with carbon right so they use electrolysis for extraction of such kind of metal. so we have three broad categories exactly metals which are found in free state you just get it clean the mud you have this metals which are moderately reactive in that case we reduce using carbon because generally we get in the form of oxides sorry zinc oxide we form you get in the form of oxides we reduce the form using carbon and some reactive metals we use electrolysis because you can't use the reduction method correct so we have metals of low reactivity we have metals of medium reactivity and we have metals of high reactivity correct for metals of low reactivity we get natural form directly metals of medium reactivity is this guy we get reduced and metals of high reactivity use electrolysis thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again